So what do we have here? A beautifully rendered cave scene in Blender. Now let's see how did I create this scene. But before that, uh, if you are new, welcome to my channel where we learn and create 3D stuff. I am Yash, that Indian animator and I am currently working on a short film which is a small part of Ramayana. We have a specific scene in which Hanumanji is bringing Sanjeevni to Lakshman. So in this short film, Hanumanji flies towards the mountain and all the hurdles he has to face to bring Sanjeevni to Lakshman. If you want to see where and uh, how I am creating this short film, you can click the link in the description and check out the live stream. So see you there. Okay, enough of the self promotion. Let's start the work. So the scene you are seeing here is from the same short film I am creating. And we have a beautiful looking cave here. Now let's see how did I create this scene. So I started with a simple cylinder, rotated it 90 degrees. After that I subdivided the cylinder and added a displace modifier to give it some definition. And with this our first step is done. Now if you just want to stop there and add props and assets to the cave you can now as i'm going to show you here so what you can do is create some rocks by creating a cube subdividing it decimating it so here you have a simple rock but it's very sharp looking without any details so now what you can do uh, is you can add a bevel modifier to keep the shape of the rock then add subdivision modifier to add more geometry and then again a displace modifier for details on the rock with this method, you can create as many rocks as you want and use them to populate your scene. For example, I am using particle system to create particles on the cave and in the render settings, I am using the collection option to use our rock collection. Click on pick random and play with scale and randomness and with this, all of our rocks are distributed on our cave. You can also use rotation. Click on orientation axis and select normal and give rotation some randomness as well. Now if you want to randomly place your rocks on the surface, you can use scatter add-on. All you have to do is go to edit, preferences and add-ons. Type scatter objects add-on and turn it on. Once that is done, select all the objects you want to scatter, then shift select your cave and press F3. Write scatter object and select it. After that, all you have to do is draw on top of the surface of your cave and all the objects will be scattered on the surface. This method is such easy method to populate props and assets on your ground wherever you want them. And with this, your base mesh is ready for texturing. But before texturing, you have to unwrap all your geometries which are there in your scene. So select your cave and go to edit mode. Select an edge loop, go to this edge and press mark scene. Now your cave is ready for unwrapping. Select everything and go to UV tab, unwrap and click on minimum stretch. This option only appears in the newer versions of Blender. So if you are following this tutorial, I will recommend you to you know use newer version of Blender. Once the unwrap is complete for all the models in your scene, you can export them individually as an FBX. But remember, turn this animation tab off if you only need this object for texturing. Select your path, click on the selected objects, mesh and hit the export button. Now let's move on to Substance Painter for texturing. Once you have your Substance Painter open, you can import your FBX and start your texture painting using this tool. Though this tutorial is an overview, I will not go deep dive into using Substance Painter. You can use Blender as well for your texturing uh, if you want to. I am more comfortable using this tool, uh, so that's why I am using this. You can use whichever software you prefer for your texture painting. So in Painter, click File, New, select your mesh and your resolution here. If your prop or asset is far away object and not a hero object, you can get away with low res. Let's hit OK and here we go before painting you will have to bake the mesh maps under texture set settings if you have high poly object which you may have sculpted you can add that here if not then we can just use low poly mesh as high poly mesh and remember to select the output size higher because the resolution will affect your texture painting then you can bake the textures once that is done you can return to your painting mode and start to texture paint now, i won't bore you with all the nitty gritty of texturing but all the steps which are necessary before painting are done now it's your creative take now and you can texture <coughs> out of your assets using these layers here so let me quickly texture paint this rock and let me get back to you in a bit meanwhile you can check out these animated assets for your games or scenes you can check them out in blender market and gumroad link is in the description so after texturing these rocks they look like this and meanwhile the main cave is also textured in substance painter you can see this is not the same cave as i showed previously but all the major steps are followed creating this cave the only thing which is different from our previous cave is that the whole cave is sculpted 
in just one mesh. In this cave, I did not place rocks using particle systems and scatter objects add-on. This cave is created like this for stylization purpose. And I wanted the rocks to feel more integrated and painted on top of the cave ground. So I chose to sculpt the rocks manually in Blender. All the placements of the rocks are deliberate instead of random. So that's why I chose to sculpt the cave in rocks instead of using the method which was shown in this tutorial. So let's move on to the next step which is exporting and creating materials in Blender. Uh, exporting from Substance Painter is fairly easy. Uh, just select a location, resolution and export. Once the exporting is done, you can use those textures in Blender using Node Wrangler add-on which comes with Blender. You can turn it on in this edit, preferences, add-ons and type Node Wrangler. Tick this box and you are gold. Once your add-on is on, select your mesh and go to shader editor. In the shader editor, select your shader and press Ctrl Shift T and you can select all the textures you exported from Substance Painter and hit OK. Okay. This way, all the textures are connected to your shader and you can see your model with textures in your file. Now, let's go to lighting. For our scene, we are doing some night lighting. So let's start. Let's just use a simple HDRI from Polyhaven or you can create it if you want to. So in my short film, I have created this HDRI and I'm using it for our scene here. After that, you can place your camera in your scene and take a look from your camera. The light is not good enough right now and you cannot see anything. All the hard work you did was that for nothing. It's not like that. Uh, let's add some lights. So for this scene, I have added a sunlight, an area light and couple of point lights to match our reference here. The most important thing in any project is reference or a concept uh, whatever you want to call it for my scene here this was my reference so I decided to add lights accordingly but still I was not getting a rim light here on the rocks so what I did was sometimes you have to you know um, cheat to fake a light and that's exactly what I did I cheated a bit and added a layer weight node in the shader editor created a color ramp and connected Fernal, Fresnel whatever you want to call it to factor of a color ramp in the color ramp I shrunk the values of blacks and whites and changed color accordingly to my scene so with this method I was able to get fake rim light without using actual lights in the scene Blender's shader editor Editor is really powerful and you can use it to make some really amazing shaders and stuff so after that I just created a mix color node set that to screen and put color ramp into a and our texture into B and with this we were able to get this output which is looking pretty close to the reference here now it's time for rendering before rendering, let's see how we can utilize some passes for our compositing in the blender. For this scene, I'm going to use mist and normal pass for compositing. So in the view layer, let's click on the mist and normal passes under passes and data tab. You cannot just hit the render yet because the mist pass needs to have a starting and depth values. If you miss this step, your mist pass could look weird in the output. So let's first change the values of start and depth in the mist pass properly. Under world property, to see how far the mist will go, let's select the measure tool here and measure the distance from camera to starting of your cave. The value for me is 1.5 meters. It can be different for you so put those values accordingly and if I measure the distance from the camera to end of my cave it's around 10 here. So I will put 10 in the depth channel here. With this our mist pass is ready for rendering. Under render properties I'm selecting cycles because for my short film, I'm using cycles as my renderer. You can use EV if you choose to. It's all up to your preferences. So let's change some settings here. For rendering, I'm choosing 128 samples, turning on denoising. I'm turning off the motion blur. That's my stylistic choice. For the short film, if you want realistic kind of results, uh, you can definitely turn this on. If you have an HDRI and don't want to see it in render, you can take this transparent box on. That way your HDRI won't be visible in the final render. And if you want to see the HDRI in your final render, you can take this box off. Under color management, I don't touch this display device. Under view, transform, AGX is the latest thing I guess which everyone is using so we are using it too. You can always play with these settings and check on your own that which settings you know suits your renders more. And now we are ready for render. After rendering our image is looking like this. It's not half bad but as we know a little bit of compositing goes a long way. So here we are going to utilize our mist and normal pass. Using mist and normal pass is totally optional by the way. These settings depends on your style and concept. Let's see our mist pass. This is how it looks right now. Let's add color ramp and connect our mist pass to factor of our color ramp. After that we can create a mix color node and add our output from color ramp with our original image. And this is how it will look. Suddenly we have a fog in our scene and it looks so cool. So for cheap static fog you can use mist pass for sure. Here I am using this normal pass totally optional by the way but let's see why I'm using this normal pass. Uh, let's create a filter node and connect normal to image. Under the filter type let's select Sobel. Let's connect output of our filter 
to color ramp and let's make our black thing go till the midway. If we see the color ramp now, this is how it looks. Now let's add a mix color node. Use the output of our color ramp to factor of the mix color node. And in the first image, we go with our original render image. And in the second one, the color will be just black. So if we see it now, the output looks like this. We have successfully added outlines to our render. These lines totally depend on our normal and our color ramp. So we don't have much control over outlines, but getting free outlines in Compositor is way better than nothing. Obviously adding outlines to our render is totally a stylistic choice and we are creating a stylized render here. So we are adding these lines here. But if we see now, the lines are still very sharp and it looks like they are slapped on top of the render. To fix that, we can just add blur node in between and use Gaussian blur and blur the lines ever so slightly. For me, it's 2 in both X and Y. This way, I was able to integrate the lines in our render. Let's add some bloom effect by adding this glare node. Now we have these two outputs. Let's create a mix color node and I'm using blending mode add to add those two outputs together. And the factor is 1. After this, I added brightness contrast node to brighten my scene and to have some contrast. Little bit of exposure and some hue saturation values to tweak it to my liking. You can just play with all these settings as per your scene and come up with cool results. In the end, I added a lens distortion node to have some distortion and chromatic aberration to our image. And with this, our basic compositing is done for this scene. And here's the final result after doing the compositing. And this is how it looks, the final render. If you have been sitting here so far, I really appreciate your patience. I hope you learned something from this tutorial. If you have, please hit the like and subscribe button uh, it will make me happy and when you create something feel free to share your creation in my discord channel uh, link is in the description if you want to see what i'm creating you can check out my live streams as well and if you want to get hold to these animated assets feel free to check out my gumroad and blender market page with this out of the way thank you so much for your support keep creating have fun and i will see you next time bye